I first met in person with Mary E. in the summer of 2007. I had arranged with her husband of 15 years, Terrence, to see her for an interview. Mary had initially agreed, since I wasn't a newsman but rather an amateur writer gathering a few early college assignments. If all went according to plan, some pieces of fiction. We scheduled for an interview on a particular weekend when I was in Chicago on unrelated business. But at the last moment, Mary changed her mind and locked herself in the couple's bedroom, refusing to meet with me. For half an hour, I sat there with Terrence as we camped outside the bedroom door. I, listening, and taking notes while he attempted to fruitlessly calm his wife. The things Mary said made little sense, but fit the pattern I was expecting. Though I could not see her, I could tell from her voice that she was crying. More often than not, her objections to speaking with me centered around thin, occurrent, and diatribe on her dreams, her nightmares. Terrence apologized profusely when we ceased the exercise, and I did my best to take it in stride. Recall that I wasn't a reporter in search of a story, but merely a curious young man in search for information. Besides, I thought at the time I could perhaps find another similar case if I put my mind and resources to it. Mary E. was the CISA for a mall Chicago-based bulletin board system in 1992, when she first encountered Smile.jpg, and her life changed forever. She and Terrence had been married for only five months. Mary was one of the estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was posted on a hyperlink on the BBS, though she is the only one who has spoken openly about the experience. The rest have remained anonymous, or perhaps dead. In 2005, when I was only in 10th grade, Smile.jpg was first brought to my attention by my burgeoning interest in the web-based phenomena. Mary was most often cited as a victim of what was sometimes referred to as Smile.dog, the being Smile.jpg is reputed to display. What caused my interest was the sheer lack of information, usually to point that people don't believe it exists, or it's a rumor, or maybe even it's a hoax. It's unique, though. Though the entire phenomenon centers around a picture file, that file is nowhere to be found on the internet. Certainly, many photo manipulated, you know, pictures have hit the web, but it is suspected that these are fakes, though, because they do not have the effect the true smile that JPG is believed to have, namely sudden onset in the temporal lobe, epilepsy, and acute anxiety. This purported reaction in the viewer is one of these phantom-like instances. Small.jpg is regarded with such disdain, since it is patently absurd, though depending on whom you ask, the reluctance and acknowledge of Small.jpg's existence might be just as much out of fear as it is in disbelief. Neither Small.jpg nor Small.dog is mentioned anywhere in Wikipedia, though the website features articles on such other perhaps more scandalous shock sites such as Hello.jpg or Two Girls in One Cup. Any attempt to create a page pertaining to Smile.jpg is deleted. Encounters with Smile.jpg are the stuff of internet legend. Mary E's story is not unique. There are many unverified rumors of Smile.jpg showing up on the early days of Unset and even more persistent tale in 2002, a hacker flooded the forums of humor and satire website, something awful and deluge of smile.dog appears, rendering almost half the forum's users at the time epileptic. It is also said that in the mid to late 90s, that smile.jpg circulated on unsent and is an attachment of a chainmail with the subject, smile, God loves you. Yet despite of the huge exposure these stunts would generate, there are very few people who admit to have experienced any of them, and no trace or file link was ever discovered. Those who claim to have seen Smile.jpg often weakly joke that they were far too busy to save a copy of the picture on their hard drive. However, all alleged victims offer the same description of the photo, a dog-like creature, usually described as a Siberian husky, illuminated by the flash of a camera. It sits in a dim room only background detail that is visible is a human hand extending from the darkness near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but it is usually described as beckoning. Of course, most attention is given to the dog, 
or the dog creature. The muzzle of the beast is reputedly split in a wide grin, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp human-looking teeth. This is, of course, not a description given immediately after viewing the picture, but rather a recollection of victims who claim to have seen the picture endlessly repeated in their mind's eye, when in reality, having epileptic fits. These fits are reported to continue indeterminably, often while the victim's asleep, resulting in a very vivid nightmare. These may be treated with medication, though some are more effective than others. Mary E., I assumed, was not on effective medication. That was why after my visit to her apartment in 2007, I sent out feelers and several folklore and urban legend-oriented news groups, websites, and mailing lists, hoping to find the name of the supposed victim of Smile.jpg, who felt more interested in talking about his experiences. For a time, nothing happened, and at length, I forgot completely about my pursuits, since I'd begun my freshman year of college and I'd been quite busy. Mary contacted me via email. However, it was near the beginning of March 2008. Dear Mr. L, I am incredibly sorry about my behaviour last summer when you came to interview me. I hope you understand that it was no fault of yours, but part of my own problems that led me to act out as I did. I realised that I could have handled the situation more definitely, however, I hope you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years, I have been haunted by small dog jpeg. Small dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it is true. There is no more quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that make them completely unlike any real dreams I have ever had. I do not move and do not speak. I simply look ahead and the only thing in front of me is a scene from a horrible picture if the beckoning hat and I see smile dog. It talks to me. It is not a dog of course, though I'm not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone if I only do as it asks. All I must do it so it is, spread the word. That is how it fades with its mind, and I exactly know what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And occurred. The week after my incident, I received in the mail a Manino envelope with no return address. Inside, only a three quarter inch floppy disk. Without having to check, I knew precisely what was on it. I thought for a long time about my options. I could have shown it to a stranger, a co-worker. I could even show it to Terence. As much as the idea disgusted me. And what would happen then? What if Smile Girl kept its word? I could sleep. Yet, yeah, if it lied, what would I do? And who would say something worse would not come to me if I did as the creature asked. So I did nothing for 15 years, though it, I kept the disc hidden among my things. Every night for 15 years, a small dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years I have stood strong, though there have been some hard times. Many of my fellow victims on BBS board where I first encountered small but JPEG stopped posting. I heard that some of them committed suicide. Others remain completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I wear about the most. I sincerely hope you will forgive me, Mr. L. But last summer when you contacted me and my husband about the interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy disk. I did not care if Small Dog was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with. And I thought I would not feel sorry when you took the disk as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realised what I was doing. 
was plotting, ru plotting to ruin the life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact I still cannot. I am ashamed, Mr. L, and I hope this warning will dissuade you from your further investigation of Smolder Jacob. You made in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I am, then fully more developed. Some will not hesitate to follow small dog's orders. Stop while you're still home. Sincerely, Mary E. Terence contacted me later that month with the news that his wife had killed herself. While cleaning up the various things she'd left behind, closing email accounts, and the like, he happened upon above my message. He was a man in shambles. He wept as he told me to listen to his wife's advice. He'd found the diskette, he revealed, and burned it, until it was nothing but a stickin', until it was nothing but a stinking pile of blackened plastic. The part that most disturbed him, however, was how the diskette hissed as it melted, like some sort of animal. I will admit, I was a little uncertain how to respond to this. At first I thought perhaps it was a joke, with the couple... A quick check of several Chicago newspapers' online obituaries, however, proved that Mary E. was indeed dead. There was, of course, no mention of suicide in the article. I decided that, for a time at least, I would not further pursue the subject on Smile.jpg, especially since I had finals coming up at the end of May. But the world has odd ways of testing us. Almost a full year after I'd returned from my disastrous interview with Mary E., I received another email. It read, Hello. I found your email address through mailing list, and the profile said you were interested in Smile Dog. I saw it. It's not as bad as everyone says. I have it sent to you here, just spreading the word. The final line chilled me to the bone. According to my email client, there was one file attachment called naturally smile.jpg. I considered downloading it, for some time. It was most likely a fake, I imagine. And even if it weren't, I was never wholly convinced of Smile.jpg's particular powers. Mary E's account had me shaken, yes, but she was probably mentally unbalanced anyway. After all, how could a simple image do what Smile.jpg was said to accomplish? What sort of creature was it that could break one's mind with only the power of the eye? And if such things were potentially real, I don't know. If I download the image, if I looked at it, and if Mary turned out to be correct, if Smile.Dog came to me in my dreams, demanding I spread the word, what do I do? Would I leave my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to give up until I died? Or simply just spread the word, eager to be put the rest? And if I choose the later route, how could I do it? Whom would I burn it on? If I went through with my earlier intention to write a short article about Smile.jpg, I decided I could attach it as evidence, and anyone who read the article, anyone who took interest, would be affected. And even assuming that Smile.jpg was attached and was genuine, would I really be that selfish to save myself in that manner? Could I spread the word? Yes. Yes, I could. <laughs>